This video is all about how to find which variation of the Connors RSI pullback trading system you want to trade. Uh, the Connors RSI pullback trading system is described in a free publication from tradingmarkets.com called Introduction to Connors RSI. And there are many variations. Once you start to put in all of the various parameters described in that booklet, there are over a thousand variations of strategies. So it's kind of important to fix on a strategy variation has proven to have certain characteristics over time and I'm going to show you in this video how to find out what the characteristics are and which strategy variation you might be interested in trading. So let's get started. Okay so now I'm going to run the, the trade simulation template and I'll select that by first of all selecting the category Connors RSI pullback trading and I've got two templates in here. I've got a signals template to give me daily signals and the trade sim template. So I'll select trade simulation I'll close down this uh, panel here, giving me more screen real estate for the video. And as you can see, I have selected on the left in my symbol lists panel, uh, a list called all equities. And that consists of around 5,000 stocks. And I have it updated as of uh, Friday, February the 1st, 2013 using end of day data. And I have two years worth of history for each of these stocks. So all I'm going to do now is hit run and you can see that it will start processing. You'll see the progress bar go along the bottom. All you have to do is really wait for the whole thing to finish. But there are uh, 64 variations of this strategy that are being run through 5000 symbols. So it's going to take a little while to run. The simulation settings tab shows you each of the variations that is being run and you can see down here there are 64 of these variations. This isn't the entire set of variations that could be run. Uh, in the All Settings tab, you have a list of every single possible variation, and there's um, around 1,500 possible variations of this strategy. But I've put in the Simulation Settings tab a set of 64 to make it a reasonable thing to run on a monthly basis or weekly basis. This will take approximately, on my computer, this should take uh, approximately 18 minutes to complete. So I'm just going to pause the video and come back when it's done and take a look at the results. Okay, so the template has finished running and uh, here's the, the set of results. I can scroll to the bottom of this list. We can see there are 64 different results and I can sort them in, in any way I like. Right now I'm going to sort them in terms of profit and loss percentage. So this is the average profit and loss per trade for each of the trades that is made. So the highest average profit and loss was a uh, average profit of 10% with a hold period of 10 and a half days and percentage win rate of 76%. But there are only 51 trades made with this variation of the strategy. So that indicates that it is uh, very stringent entry requirements which you can verify by looking at the parameters here. Uh, and the parameters are W, which is the sell-off percent that you're looking for before you can make an entry, is uh, 8%. It's got to close within the lower 10% of its daily range. The Connors RSI value has to be less than 15. And if all those, those conditions are true, plus the other conditions that are default parts of the strategy, then you place a limit order for 10% uh, less than the closing price. Once you make your entry, you then wait for Connors RSI to be greater than 80. So quite stringent entry requirements, as you can see, by a number of trades that were made. Um, and the number of hold days also indicates that it took a while for this strategy to exit, meaning that um, potentially there was a greater sell-off after you were in. So the drawdown in this particular strategy is probably uh, reasonably high. So you might want to avoid that. You might also might want to avoid it because there aren't that many trades that were made. And when you get so few trades, the statistical relevance of those trades, I think, becomes a little um, a little less. So you can order them by p &L. It's interesting to do that so that you can scroll through the list and see which of the variations were not profitable. And at the bottom, there are three variations that were not profitable. And these appear to have in common the fact that they are extremely stringent entry requirements indicated by the uh, number of trades that were made. But in addition to that, the exit requirement was that the Connors RSI only got back above 50 
or 60. Uh, and waiting for that to occur, it didn't take that long, as you can see, like three days or four days, um, didn't give the position enough time to be profitable. So you can scroll through this list and you can see which ones were profitable, what the average profit and loss was, and how many trades were made during that period. So bear in mind this was um, a two-year historical period, 5,000 stocks during that period, and the most frequently traded strategy was, let me just sort this by frequency, was this strategy here, which had 1,850 trades with an average profit and loss of 1.73% and an average hold of 2.6 days with a win rate of 68%. So that strategy could be interesting if you're looking for something to trade more frequently. And if something trades more frequently, then you get to take advantage of the profit and loss more often. So that could be, if that's part of your trading uh, idea and your, your trading system, then this variation of the strategy might be something that you would put into the signals template so that you can run every night and get limit order prices for tomorrow. And you can also run that intraday to get uh, to find out whether the limit order price has been hit. So as you can see, it's, it's a very easy thing to run the simulation. It does take a while because there's a, a, quite a number of variations to run over. And depending on the size of the list that you're running it against, you know, it could, it could you know, my list is quite large at 5,000 stocks. Uh, but you could run it on, say, the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100, and it wouldn't take quite as long to run. This is something that you probably want to do once a month um, or, you know, at the most once a week. You wouldn't want to run this every day because the numbers won't change that much on a day-by-day -day basis because you're aggregating these things over a two-year period. So you could run this every month or every two months or every quarter just to make sure that the, the numbers are still holding up and that you know the strategies are still giving the results that you, um, the reason why you started using that strategy, that the results are still being maintained. And by the way, all of the individual results that, are, that have been run uh, you know, I said it took about 18 minutes to run these whole this whole set of variations. Each one of those results is saved on your hard drive in the reports directory as an Excel file, and you're able to go into that Excel file and look at all of the individual trades that were uh, made during the simulation, and see lots of other statistics about it too. So once you've run this template, you have a lot of information at your fingertips that you can go and look at. So thanks for watching.